Everyone thinks my Minecraft bases suck, and in return, they've all been destroyed. So to make sure no one ever messes with my base again, I'm gonna build the most secure base on this server. After building a platform for this base, we need an outer layer filled with lava to protect it. Because if mobs and players can just walk onto the base, it's not that secure. We need a lot of lava. And the best way to do that is to create a farm that can produce an infinite amount of lava. We need cauldrons, some dripstone, and glass. I don't exactly know how to build this thing, but this should be correct. Okay, okay. Lava is pouring out of the dripstone. That means it's working. Yes. Not yes, because apparently it takes 19 real life minutes to fill up a single single cauldron with lava. I need over 2,000 buckets of lava. Now that I've collected all of the lava, I can start placing them all around the base. And now we have a base that prevents anyone from reaching to the other side. But why stop there? Anyone can just take a bow and shoot at me without ever taking a step into my base. And in order to stop that, we'll need a wall, another wall, and then repeat that like 80 times. In order to make the wall, we need netherrack, so we can smelt it into nether bricks and combine it with nether wards. So the fastest way to do that is by making an auto smelter. And for the nether wards, all I can do is place hundreds of them. This isn't even close to how much I need. Once I'm done building this wall, every new design will add an extra level of security to it. Which is also important because once I'm done building this base, I'm gonna invite everyone on the server and make them attempt to survive the high levels of security set up at the base and ask all of them if my base is worthy enough to not be griefed. Looking back at this, I think it would have been easier if I just asked them to stop griefing my base. After thousands of nether warts, I finished the wall around my base. But if you're curious about these gaps between the walls, I'll explain what those are in a minute. But right now, I want to focus on this area of the base. Every good base needs a good design. And I was thinking on making the platform an eyeball. Hear me out. We can definitely make this eyeball look better. We just need magenta stained glass, which requires a lot of sand, which is the easy part. But in order to make the glass magenta, we're gonna need a magenta flower, which actually only requires one, since bone meals can infinitely regrow them. We're just gonna need a lot of bone meal. Now we got our magenta stained glass, here's the plan. When you place stained glass in a pattern, it creates this cool visual effect. And instead, I want to use this around the eyeball. That looks really cool. Now we're going to give the eyes a veiny look. And I'll start by mining random lines across the eye and place glass there. And to brighten it up even more, if we place lava underneath, we get this awesome look. This actually looks sick. It's two in the morning right now. I might have woken up everyone in the house. Now we need to fill in these gaps around the walls with watchtowers. I'll start off by building the walls with nether bricks. But for the wood type, I'm going to need a lot of warp logs. And crimson stem. I'm going to have to strip a lot of these logs too. Just like that, we have ourselves a watchtower. Later on, I'm going to fill these watchtowers with skeleton snipers, where they'll be able to eliminate players that dare to enter. But uh, we got to finish the other towers first. And now we got ourselves four watchtowers, and soon we'll equip them with skeletons. But right now, let's focus on the entrance. Every base needs an entrance, but for this base, our entrance is going to be different. When you place fence gates here and a block above your head, it prevents you from walking across until you open it. So what if we design a contraption that determines if you can enter with a flick of a button? In order to do that, we're going to need slime blocks. So it looks like we're going to have to find ourselves a swamp bike. By the way, getting all of these slime blocks took eight hours. We need to head to a fortress now to collect wither stone so we can create a beacon because having a beacon as like a gate is the coolest thing ever. Although getting three may have been a bit much. Oh, I already have the beacons. That was fast. Dun 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 na 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 bum 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 ma 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 ma. And when I place a redstone torch here, the entrance should work. 
I also made it work as an exit too. So now that we've got an entrance that are blocked by literal laser beams, I'd like to mention that about a minute ago, I said I built four watchtowers, except one of them didn't have a roof. And it's because this watchtower is going to be used as a TNT launcher. And I'm gonna build a TNT cannon that'll be used on enemies and they'll be begging for mercy. Oh, hi. <laughs> Don't, don't mind me. I'm just, I'm just passing by. Oh my god! Ah! It's safe to say my machine is working. Aw, but it destroyed my nether work though. Fortunately, we won't have to worry about that since the next step of the base is going to be the coolest one yet. I'm gonna make a color wheel biome divided into eight different sections, each color representing a biome. And if you don't like me being the millionth person to make a biome around their base, then go watch someone else, like my second channel. Our first color is green, which we'll use as a plains biome to represent. Of course, just slapping grass blocks isn't gonna work. Let's make a little carrot farm. To add extra details, I wanna bone meal the grass. Why is there so many fossils in the air? Oh, okay. Let's add some trees and a nice little swing. Now we can say the green quadrant is done. Time for the yellow section. For yellow, we can do a sand biome. I'd also like to build a mini desert temple this looks good enough there's also just nothing in a sand biome so dead bushes and cactuses is all we can do for the orange section the only thing i can think of is the badlands biome luckily we're right next to one so we can collect some terracotta we can use terracotta to make pillars around the biome the badlands also have a lot of mine shafts so this is the best we can do and then add some scarecrows because why not we still have a lot of biomes to do so cue the montage <laughs> Why'd you go okay? <laughs> we have built all eight biomes for the base, which I've gotten done in one day. And time is very important because I'm in a sub race with this guy to 500,000 subs. And this guy says this. Are you still playing the Who's Fair? You're off the game. It's never that serious, little buddy. You're you you in a sub race. Game. It's not that serious, <laughs> little. I'm not even asking y'all to subscribe, but if he wants to fight with fire, I'll fight back. Mark my words, I will win the sub race, and I will be pushing flame frags out of a plane. Now that I've completely finished the top part of the base, it's time to start working on the most secure basement in all of Minecraft. Wait, did I not mention that there's a basement to this thing? Yeah, uh, we still have to build the actual secure part of the base. Oh my god! We have dug out the main area, and now it's time to fill the floor with smooth quartz. Also, as of editing this, I never realized that you can trade quartz with villagers. I never realized that was a thing, so I kinda mined over 14,000 quartz blocks. I really want to quit Minecraft content. I'm gonna need blackstone to make this cool circular staircase and finish placing all the smooth quartz. I actually mined so much quartz, I had a dream about quartz. That's not true, but it, it would be funny if it w was. Oh my god, I can't kill this bat. Then we can add details to the base that make it nicer. Like this carpet pattern, this cool pillar design, these cool looking like wall, even a nether vine. Oh. He wants the VC. Hey, Render. Are you guys gonna kill me because I didn't sleep? All right, so for my video, so yeah. you kill Hero, right? Yeah. So can we get the multiplier back? Bruh. A few months ago, I killed this guy's teammate and stole her multiplier, which is used for lives. Fast forward to now, they want their multiplier back, which I have no issue giving. So I'd go to meet up with them. But as soon as I exit my base, I hear glass breaking. Oh. Oh, Render? Um. Wow, okay. Hi, that's you're nice. using a light show. You might want to come Elijah? down to the floor. Um, yeah, you might wanna... Wow, okay, that's nice. You, If you pearl here, I'm going to light your away. Can't you get, light you away. can. You I want can. you to listen. I want you to listen. You know where this base is. What more of a difference will it make if I don't light your away? I'll just break this. What are you talking about? We'll, we'll just Hello? Your I know your entire God. thing. A little more context. This thing I've been using to fly is called an elytra. And on this server, elytras are banned. And since these players saw me breaking the rules and they know where my base is that kind of means give me two multipliers or i'm wiping this i okay, swear okay yeah, okay okay can't kill me can't kill me listen i'm not listen to i'm you not go <laughs> give it to hero all give right it to hero. is that two hero
I knew it! I knew it! Talk about scummy. Oh my god. Eventually, I negotiated with them and gave them another multiplier and they left my base. But like, are you seeing this? People know where my base is. All it takes is one player to leak my base to the whole server. And my mission to build a base that no one can grieve will forever remain incomplete. So why am I still standing here? We gotta go finish this base before everyone knows. I built the main room and I've also given it its own elevator because flying in and out of my base is getting annoying. But finally, we get to have some fun. Starting off by building room number one, the parkour room. If players are gonna test the security of these rooms, I'm gonna have to make sure once you enter the room, you cannot leave alive. But since I've dug out the area for the room, we can start off by making a pretty wall design. If I'm gonna try and kill these players, I wanna do it in fashion. But if players do complete the parkour, I want there to be a reward. Make it look nice and play some gold blocks and a chest with the special reward of a one carat. I, th I think it's worth it. Now I need to make sure the parkour is difficult. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're good on that part. Now when players fall off, I don't want there to be nothing to happen. I'm going to fill the floor with lava. So every time they fall, they're going to pay the price. And now if it wasn't difficult before, it is now. Oh, okay. But what if a parkour master just does it all on one try? We need to make contraptions that prevent that from happening. We can make a tripwire hook and connect it to this redstone where it'll activate a poisonous dispenser when you walk through the tripwire. And at the same time, the tripwire also activates a dispenser that shoots out flaming arrows. And players are gonna have to make sure they don't accidentally get hit by it. And with that, the parkour room is finished. For the next room, I'm gonna build a PvP arena. Because the best way to eliminate players is by making them do it themselves. So now we just gotta build the platform and make it look like a cool battle arena. So we got the design finished, but there's one more thing I wanna add. Since I'm on the levels SP, it makes sense to make the floor an XP bottle. So this is the closest I can get to an actual XP bottle. And also I'm gonna supply the kits for people to fight each other. And the goal of eliminating players will be hilarious since I'll watch these players do it themselves while I do nothing. Uh, I'm also like broke, so I can only supply cookies. So I've made enough chests to supply five fights, which should be enough. And we are done with the PvP room, meaning we only have two more rooms left, which personally, I think the next room is the coolest one yet. The library. This will be my most secure room yet. Filled with a, a lot of stuff. This time though, I'll be digging out a much wider area for this room, which I wanna build a red pillar in the center. And I just so happen to have an iron farm that produces roses, which I'll use to make red concrete and red stained glass. If you're curious on what I'll use the platform for, it's where my enchantment table is gonna go. And yes, this is a level 30 enchantment table. And for the walls, I'm gonna need a lot of mangrove logs. I think this is my coolest wall design yet. Now we have to fill in these stone areas with bookshelves, which is gonna take a lot of books. And I don't even have enough emeralds. I gotta use them to trade with villagers. And I don't even know how many I can just mine a bunch of wood. But who knows how many that is. Wait, strongholds have libraries. Why did this take me so long to realize? Okay, that was a lot of bookshelves, but now we need to start collecting those nether lantern thingies. And I'm not just getting them to give the room a cool lighting. I'm doing this because I never talked about how we're supposed to get from here to here. And I'm gonna create these cool floating lanterns that make its way to the enchantment room. Have you ever seen those floating lantern festivals? I'm basically like building that, but like you can parkour on it. All right, that's enough of the pretty designs. I wanna do the secure part of this thing. I think it would be really funny if I set off a trap that was shooting hundreds of arrows and the members had to get to the button that turns it off but to get to the button we should build a flying machine that goes back and forward so members have to jump onto the flying machine and jump to the button but in order to escape i'll set up a route where it'll lead them inside the pillar and they'll have two escape options either the hard one or the easy one 
Wait, why is the easy one not so easy? Now we need to set up this complicated redstone machine. And instead of telling you what it does, how about I tell you what it does? Wait, no, I meant show, not tell. Okay, basically players are gonna have to parkour their way to escape. I think I underestimated the hard escape route. This is borderline impossible. Oh well. In order to rain havoc on these little goons, I want to set up a machine that auto shoots arrows with the press of a button. I finished the machine, but instead of seeing if it works, we can wait until the whole server is in the room and hope that it works. Nothing should go wrong with that. And now we place the lava and the library room is finished. Also, I forgot to mention that I built an anvil trap. Yeah, no one's gonna fall for this. It's just really funny. Everything that has happened has led up to this moment, building the final room, where this room will be the actual base of the room, because without a base and a secure base, it's just a secure. I don't know where I'm going with this. There will be two separate rooms. The first room for farms and automated machines, and the second one for my bedroom with a secret entrance with all of my valuables. But we need to start off with the first room, and which I'll be making an automatic storage system that puts my items in certain chests with without me doing it myself. And I'll make a water tunnel that leads to a hopper connected to all the chests. And when I add four items in the hopper and then 41 items, those 41 items are gonna determine what item is going in the chest. And we also have a chest where if it's not categorized, it goes all in this one chest. So if I grab a bunch of items from my chest and put it in here, this should work. That is perfect. And now we need an auto smelter. Oh my God. I. I need hoppers. Wait, I already have an auto smelter. How did I forget that? And for farms, I want to make a wool farm that provides me infinite wool. We just got to grab a sheep and bring them to the base. I'm so dumb. There's an ocean right below me. I'd be lying if I said I've been doing this on purpose. Now that we got our sheeps, we need them to breed and get them in their own glass dome. And with a little bit of redstone, we have ourselves an automatic wool farm. Although wool is useful, it won't help me in fights, but potions will. So what if we made a machine that can brew any potion? of our choice with a click of a button so we'll need to line some redstone torches that activate the droppers and we just gotta get the materials like nether warts and magma cream now with the button this should give us our potions thank goodness that worked because if it didn't I wasn't gonna fix it. I'm always needing cobblestone, which I can just mine underground to get, but then mobs start getting in the way and it gets annoying. So what if I build a cobblestone generator that produces an infinite amount of cobblestone from a lava and a water bucket? And it looks like when I mine it, the generator works. But just to add that decoration to it, I'll make a few pillars around it. And I can proudly say that the farm room is finished. For the other side of the room, this is where my bed is gonna go. But that's what I want you to think. Because although this room will just be an empty area for my bed, what lies beneath it will be behind the walls. I'm gonna create what I like to call the color-coded machine, where you'll have to arrange a set of colors to activate a hidden door, where it'll reveal my room with all of my valuables. Best way to explain this redstone is there's four different color sections, each section having their own cauldron. And when you press the button enough times, that cauldron will will reach the same level as this comparator. And when that happens, the comparator turns on. And whatever color is in the middle is your correct color. And with that, the machine should open a hidden door. If you're wondering how we're supposed to close this door, when you set a pressure plate here, it allows you to reset the entire machine. And now that we have a hidden door, we have to make it lead somewhere. I'll set up a nice mangrove area. And if I need to escape, I can make this water elevator with a button that allows you to leave. And in this chest is where all of my value is gonna go. But according to some people, I'm not the richest on the server, which I, I think is absurd. But it's more absurd how this was the last thing I had to do, and now I'm done with the entire build. And now there's only one thing to do, and that's to show it to the entire server. Guys, welcome to the most secure base on this yeah. server. Yeah. Here, take this redstone torch, and I want you to place the redstone torch right here. Two, one. Alright, hurry up. Yo! 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 Y
Hey, yo. This is so cool. Guys, come to the picnic table. Now, I'd like to introduce you to the basement. Welcome to the basement. Yo. Okay, so the first room will be a parkour room, and there's a special reward in the end, but that's only if you can complete it. You first, Axel. All right, y'all can go. Jumper is just zooming through it. It looks like Jumper completed the parkour. Which means you guys can see the second room. Welcome to the PvP arena. I'll fight, I'll fight, I'll fight. Okay. Three, two, one. I got I'm nervous. Oh my god. 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 The next room is my library room, uh, which you'll come to realize is not an ordinary library. I volunteer no myself as Jumper. Why? Oh, <laughs> Why would you <laughs> How do oh you guys god. all mess that up? Oh my god. We're also oh, doing this tiny oh, yeah, one plug thing. Yeah, I know what to do. Right, there was a sign that time. said hit cookie bun squad for $2 million. Yo, you want to kill me? <laughs> Dude, Shady got me a 3 <laughs> so The final room is my base where you'll have everything you need in a base, including an infinite cobblestone generator. Everyone mine it. Everyone mine it. Gotta stop it's eventually. Going. If y'all can come over here, I've hidden all my valuables inside of this room right here with a color-coded combination code, which What's if you code? guess what? correctly, will open up a door. Okay, everyone <clears throat> huddle around. I need to ask you all something. For the uh, past year, I've been known to have some pretty horrible builds. And because of that, no they've business. all been destroyed. So the reason why I built Minecraft's most secure base is to ask all of you if this base is worthy enough to not be briefed. Yes. 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 And in a moment of excitement, I took a screenshot to commemorate this moment. Although I may have not built Minecraft's most secure base, it was my first ever base knowing it will never be griefed. And I wanted to thank them properly. Alright, thank you everybody and have a good what day. The <gasps> <gasps> oh, <God! laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, oh.